Hey, welcome back, World History students. Third video in our uh, crusade series. So let's think a little bit about how the Crusades changed Europe and the entire world. Well, one of the obvious impacts of the Crusades was just the amount of death it caused. It's estimated that the death toll from the Crusades is 2 to 6 million people. That's just from Western Europe. It doesn't include people that they killed on the way to the Holy Land or the Muslims that were killed in the Holy Land. Now, um, does this include the Jews or the Germanic people that were killed in Europe and in Northern Europe? I'm not sure. I would imagine that this 2 to 6 million death toll is crusaders that died. But I, I'm not sure. So if we just put that into perspective, though, the European population at the time was, you know, roughly 60 to 70 million people. So we're talking 4% to 10% of the population dying in the Crusades. So, you know, that's rather significant. All right, so if we look at this map, um, what the region looks like as we get to the 14th century, right over here, we can see that the, the Middle East, including the Holy Land, is still uh, in control by the Muslims. The Muslims, for the most part, have been pushed out of the Iberian Peninsula. We have a little bit of a foothold right here in Granada. And as the Reconquista, the reconquering, is going to continue all the way until 1492, uh, that's when the Spanish are able to push out all the Muslims from the Iberian Peninsula. And as they do that, they also get rid of the Jews. So you'll have territorial gains in the north of Europe. That's a little bit harder to see on this map here. And, and as I mentioned in the previous video, part of the Crusader mentality was just not just about taking land back from the Byzantines or taking land back for the Byzantines from the Muslims. It's also taking land or converting what they perceived as being pagans in the north. German tribes that were not yet converted to Christianity. And um, so that helped for territorial expansion into the north of Europe. Now, a big theme in the Crusades was the power of the Pope. Remember, the Crusades were started by a Pope working people up, saying, hey, let's go help the Byzantines. Let's go take back land from Muslims, Pope Urban II. And over the course of 200 years, you have this religious fervor where the Pope is organizing these Crusades. And people are feeling this religious spirit. Many people are, before going on their crusade, they were bequeathing their land to the church. So if they died, many of these lords do end up dying. They're giving their property to the church, which is, of course, headed by the pope. Kings also gained power during the crusades. Um, last week I talked about the feudal system and the many times um, the vassals to the kings, the dukes, the counts, the barons, uh, they oftentimes had more control over localities, over their, or their territory than the kings might have had. And they were constantly squabbling with each other. They are trying to focus their energies during the crusade on this external adventure known as the crusades. So many of these lords died. Their property went back to the state went back to the kings. Some of it was left to the church. All right. Um, remember that uh, Pope Urban II thought that at the end of the 11th century, when he was having problems internally, uh, he thought that he could push the focus out of the internal problems in Western Europe Put the focus on the Holy Land, and to some extent, 
it worked. Uh, another trend that we have is the importance of cities. In the feudal system, it's all about these manors and all about these estates. But in order to finance the Crusades, centers of trade and commerce became more important. And there was more interaction between West and East. And there were more people traveling. Um, so you can imagine that it, it fostered trade, which centered at these cities. Florence, Genoa, Venice. Um, so that goes into the next point that kind of commerce and trade were were important uh, important during this time as well. Um, in fact, by the end of the Crusades, as we get into the 14th century in, in Venice, Italy, um, which is uh. Venice, oh, yeah, somewhere in Italy, I can't seem to find it on there, I think it's up in here, um, Venice becomes a very, uh, a very important place, um, it's considered one of the richest and most powerful cities in Europe. Uh, it has all this trader wealth, and uh, it's not just from trade. A lot of the wealth, as you remember in the previous videos, when Constantinople was sacked, it was sacked in part by these Venetian traders. And after that, they built an empire. They broke up the, the Byzantine Empire, and they took some of it for themselves. And it's not a coincidence that as we get into the 14th and 15th century, Places like Venice and Florence, right here, um, famously sponsored by the Medici family, a famous banking family. These places uh, become centers of trade, centers of commerce. These are places where the Renaissance would first flourish. And last but not least, in some ways, a uh, bloody and dark and dark at times. The Crusades were also associated with learning because you had all of these people that were going from Western Europe to the Middle East and to the Holy Land. And, um, you know, that's, they were, they were kind of learning the knowledge of the ancient Greeks and the knowledge of, of that, uh, of Islam and, um, knowledge that also is coming from India and China, uh, all these innovations were shared as people were moving uh, back and forth. So, of course, they brought a lot of this back with them to Western Europe.